Hi everyone. Today I will be talking about a small project that I've been building, which consists of tracking my heart rate using a pulse sensor. The main reason for beginning this project was that I wanted to become more interested in fitness and I had started building an Android app to track the GPS location of runs and hikes. This Android app has been built in Kotlin using the Google Maps API for tracking and viewing the mapped out location of runs. A local database called Room was used to store the hike or run information, which provides a layer of abstraction over SQLite. The app tracks measurements such as the amount of kilometers traveled, the time tag taken to travel, as well as the average speed of travel. These are all great things to measure when trying to keep track of your fitness goals and progress. However, I realized that having data of my heart rate during runs or hikes would also be beneficial and would be a great addition to the app. So firstly, what is our heart rate and why do we actually care about it? A person's heart rate is the number of times your heart beats per minute. A healthy heart supplies the body with just the right amount of blood at the right rate for whatever the body is doing at that right at that time. Our heart rate can tell us many things about our health and fitness. While a normal heart, heart rate does not guarantee that you are free of health problems, it is useful for determining a range of health issues. For adults, a normal resting heart rate should be between 60 and 100 beats per minute. For some highly trained athletes, a resting heart rate under 60 beats per minute is normal and is indicative of their fitness level. A person's maximum heart rate is measured as 200 minus their age. This is just an approximation though and is not foolproof, but gives a good idea of how high your heart rate should be going during exercise. This also gives you an idea of what percentage of your max heart rate you are running at, which corresponds to the benefits that you are getting from it. Your heart rate will increase while exercising or exerting yourself, and how much it increases will inform you of how hard your body is working. The time it takes for your heart rate to decrease after exercise will also be able to tell you about your fitness levels. Now let's have a look at the circuit for the heart rate monitor. As someone who is not used to working with hardware, I built the, circle, the circuit with the help of Google and a helpful engineering friend. This circuit consists of a, micro, a 9 volt battery supply to power the components, a real time clock to record a timestamp for every pulse measurement, a micro SD card which records the pulse sensor data and the pulse sensor to decode the pulses. These components work together to make up the heart rate monitor. The part of this circuit that we care about the most is the pulse center, sensor. We need to know how this works. So how does the pulse sensor work? A pulse wave is the change in volume of a blood vessel that occurs when the heart pumps blood. And the pulse sensor monitors this volume change. The pulse sensor measures pulse waves by emitting red or infrared light from the body surface and detecting the change in blood flow during heartbeats as a change in the amount of light transmitted through the body. The sensor has two sides. On one side, the LED is placed along with an ambient light sensor and on the other side we have circuitry. The LED on the front side of the sensor is placed over a vein on the human body, preferably a fingertip or ear tips. Now the LED can emit light which falls directly on the vein. So now that we have a circuit, how do we use it and retrieve data? Once we have placed this pulse sensor over a fingertip and measured, over, measured our pulse for a period, we can extract the data from the SD card. The data will be stored as a timestamp and a pulse measurement. These pulse measurements do not immediately tell us what our heart rate is. The pulse measurements are just the measures of light returned from the vein. Therefore, we have to look at the peaks in the pulse wave graph to be able to calculate the beats per minute. This can be automated to save time because you're not going to want to look at a graph and check and calculate by hand. <laughs> also, in many cases, when the pulse sensor is moved around or is not completely stable, noise is invited into the data. We cannot get an accurate heart rate measurement without removing some or all of the noise in the data. 
I used a Python module called HotPy to filter out the noise as well as to calculate the beats per minute. HotPy has functions to filter out outliers or to apply low pass or high pass filters to data that has a lot of noise. After filtering out the data, we can calculate the beats per minute and plot the graph for visualization. This is just an example of how HotPy works. You can read your CSV file using get data and it can estimate your sample rate based on the timestamps recorded onto the SD card. And then when calling the process function, it takes the sample rate and the pulse data and calculates the beats per minute. Calling the plotter function will plot the graph with meaningful information such as the beats per minute and the peaks that were rejected by the algorithm because they were outliers. HeartPy also supports retrieving heart rate over a longer period of time where the heart rate could increase or decrease, such as when exercising or cooling down after exercise. To retrieve the heart rate over a longer period of time, the function process segment-wise segment can be called where you can define segments and it will calculate the beats per minute. These are just some graphs of the pulse sensor measurements. As you can see, due to moving around a bit and the pulse sensor being very cheap, the measurements are very noisy and hot by has rejected many of the peaks. The graph on the right shows the measurements after filtering, which removes some of the noise, but still shows quite a few rejected peaks. The rejected peaks are not included in the measurement of heart rate as they are seen as outliers and just noise in the data. After viewing all this data, it goes to say that many things can be improved in this project. First, it is, not ne it is necessary to have an accurate pulse sensor that is not too sensitive to noise to increase the accuracy of the measurements. Therefore, getting a better pulse sensor would improve the accuracy of the readings and reduce the amount of filtering needed afterwards. Another improvement would be to make the heart rate monitor more portable by reducing the size and creating a design that could actually work while exercising and moving around a lot. And lastly, to transmit the data to an app in real time instead of just writing to an SD card to allow for viewing of the heart rate while exercising and immediately after to be able to adjust movement and exertion after viewing the heart rate. This project is still a work in progress and analyzing the data from this first prototype of the heart rate monitor has helped me understand what I need to improve on to make it usable, portable and accurate. Thank you.